This video was brought to you by us, Slidebean. Make beautiful slide presentations in no time. Get one free month by signing up at slidebean.com slash YouTube. Ouya, a video game console the size of a Rubik's Cube, wanted to achieve something from the moment it was created. They wanted to open the last closed platform, television. It was also set to raise $950,000 in the Kickstarter crowdfunding site, and it exceeded that goal without any problem. In the first two days of the campaign, it raised $2 million and it finally got around $8.5 million for its development. The console arrived into the market with the Jellybean version of Android as its operating system. Part of its appeal was that users could root it, that's modify it at will, without losing the warranty. The passion for video games that Julie Herman had, the founder and CEO, led her to play on various platforms, but she always wanted to return to one, TV. That's why she decided to promote this initiative. So the project was born originally in 2012, but the console was a commercial fiasco. In 2015, it was acquired by the video game company Razer, and it survived until June 2019, when that company decided to end it. So what happened? This is Startup Forensics, Ouya. So the story of Ouya begins with Julie Herman, the founder, an entrepreneur and passionate about video games. Video games of all kinds, platforms, shooting, mobile games, but especially those that can be played in the living room of the house and in front of a TV. This Californian yearned to return games to TV, and that's why she created a campaign on Kickstarter to make Ouya possible. That's in July 2012. So this idea excited thousands who were willing to donate $8.5 million to make it a reality, although initially its creators asked for less than $1 million to nail down the idea. But who could deny that this platform was innovative? It allowed any developer to bring a game from a mobile application to a TV. Other features such as beautiful, open, and economical design made it stand out from traditional game consoles. Ouya became a reality thanks to over 63,000 backers who soon got their first disappointment. Although the developer kits began shipping in December 2012, those who contributed to the Kickstarter campaign received their consoles until March 2013. When it hit the market, the standard version of the Ouya console was $99 and offered 1 gig of RAM and 8 gigs of internal storage. Although there was also a 16 gig version which was sold for $129. One of the competitive advantages that Ouya wanted to offer to distinguish itself from others was, of course, the price of its games. The initial idea was that its cost would only be a fraction of what traditional consoles charged for their games. The company would not have it easy. They had to face already established giants, such as, of course, PlayStation and Xbox. In addition, they would have to come up with ways to seduce developers and convince them to create games specific for Ouya. When the console hit the market, the experts Piers Harding Rolls of the IHS firm said the gaming industry was transforming in part due to video games for the phone. These types of games tend to have lower prices than traditional consoles and in many cases they're free. Ouya was being disruptive when bringing the system to the screen and trying to monetize it by selling game updates. One of the strategies that the company identified to impact the market was to encourage developers to create content. So they offered $45,000 as a reward to those who were able to create a successful game for the console in just 10 days. We wanted to shout to the world, especially to developers, that anybody could make a game because each Ouya console was a development kit. But how did the Ouya console look like? Minimalistic would be a correct word to describe this skew. Its design was made by Yves Behar, who was also the creator of the famous Jambox speaker of Jawbone. Go watch that video. The device was equipped with a network and control adapter, an HDMI cable and batteries for the controller. It was connected via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. One of the most flashy features was that you could play up to 10 meters away from the TV. Another positive aspect was free games. The user had access to some lifetime deals for free. The console was easy to configure. You only needed to connect it to power, place the HDMI cable that went from the console to the TV and synchronize the remote. Although on paper the features of the console seemed irresistible, in practice those who tested the device had some things to say about it. For example, while renowned titles like Final Fantasy III and Cider Arcade could be found, you had to go through many, many mediocre titles before actually getting to them. Another one of the complaints was that the touch area of the controller was very sensitive and that the graphics offered by the console were very similar to the qualities provided by cell phones and tablets, which means it wasn't 
outstanding, especially if you compare that to, I don't know, a PlayStation or an Xbox. Although Ouya was a young promise, its takeoff was not so simple due to the delays in the delivery of the consoles, promise to the backers of the campaign, as well as the inconvenience with the device controller. In addition, despite being so disruptive, competitors appeared in the same niche, among them GameStick, NGs, and Project Shield. Competition. Android-based consoles soon started appearing on the market, and one of them did so in a similar way to Ouya. GameStick, whose funding was also achieved through a Kickstarter campaign, came with some advantages under their belt. Among them, a smaller size and a smaller price. While Ouya was a box similar to the size of a Rubik's Cube with a controller, the GameStick was basically a controller from which the stick was released. In addition, it was $20 cheaper than Ouya. The device had an HDMI port to connect to the TV and was based on the Jelly Bean version of Android as well. Behind this initiative was Play Jam, a software company that had been creating content for smart TVs. In February 2013, a device of Polish origin called NGs also appeared, which could not necessarily be defined as a console. It was an Android-based device which allowed, aside from playing, to listen to music, play video, surf the internet, other stuff. At CES 2013, a new console based on Google's OS was added to the list. That's Project Shield. The console was an NVIDIA project, and it appeared in a stand of the Electronic Consumer Fair in Las Vegas, sheltered by a showcase. It was a console somewhat different from the others in its category, especially since the controller included a 5-inch screen. But it could also be used, of course, with a TV screen to enjoy the full gaming experience. In addition, it was designed for multiplayer games between users, each with its console. Although the company had trouble finding buyers for the console, it did manage to stand out from the number of applications it offered. That is how, in 2014, we assigned an agreement to deliver their games through televisions and decoders of the Chinese company Xiaomi. The app library was one of the aspects of Ouya that made the CEO very proud. Ehrman told Fortune in April 2015, We believe we have built something real and valuable. I continue to read the tweets and emails of our fans who play Ouya every day, and our catalog now has more than 1,000 applications and 40,000 developers. We have the largest library of Android content for TV, even larger than Amazon's. But that was not enough to keep the company afloat. Allies. Although Ouya's growth was not going as planned, some other companies saw in Ouya a good option to display themselves. One of them was Alibaba, the Chinese e-commerce giant that in January 2015 decided to invest $10 million in the company. Alibaba's intention was to publicize its services supported by the Ouya platform. The hardware was not the strong point of the company, but its software platform was pretty successful. The CEO considered at some point that they could pivot to a software company. After all, they already had the experience both in the development of video games and interfaces for Android TV. In July 2015, a video game firm called Razer decided to buy Ouya software assets as well as its technical and development teams to expand the Android TV game business. Its CEO so far supported the transition but would not go to the new company. TechCrunch informed on that occasion that with the acquisition, Razer would integrate the games, controllers, and accounts of Ouya into its Cortex TV gaming platform, and it would also relaunch the Ouya store as Cortex for Android TV. Despite not having purchased the hardware assets, Razer offered to migrate around 200,000 Ouya users and to guarantee, for at least another year, support for Ouya's hardware. They also wanted to make them migrate to Razer devices, such as the Forge TV micro console and the Razer Serval controller package. Prior to its sale, Ouya had raised a total of $33.6 million. Between 2015 and 2019, Ouya managed to survive at the hands of Razer, who announced that they would definitely close the service in June of last year. The acquisition put several inconveniences on the table. The first one, the download server would stop working. Players had to download their favorite titles locally because after June 25th, they could no longer download anything else in Ouya. In addition, the closure of the store would remove any credits they had. This meant that players were forced to use them or lose them. So, in summary, what went wrong? Ouya promised more than they could deliver. The ideas were ingenious, but they ran into an unexpected success in Kickstarter that finally played against them. The company had delays when sending the consoles. This gave them a bad image, a bad reputation in the eyes of their backers. Another one of the company's early failures was to bet on a marketing campaign in which, literally, a user was seen vomiting. That's just weird. 
The company failed to capitalize on the success early, and it took time to take advantage of the support initially obtained by the Kickstarter backers. They left room for other companies to offer something similar and even better than their console. Ouya was later acquired by Razer, a company that promised to support the consoles and keep the platform working for some time. The commitment was kept for a year, but for a consumer, it is hard to forget that he paid for a product and that the company in charge abandoned him to his fate.